Hello everyone. In this video, we'll look at what to do when your dialogue search gets just too many results. We'll look at a number of different tools and techniques to narrow your results in a way that helps to achieve your search goals. So let's get started. When you do a dialogue search, often your initial result will be a set that's very large. They may be all very good records, and they'll all be technically correct retrievals based on your search, but the sheer number may be just too many to work with, and they may not all be focused sharply enough on what you're really looking for. Your goal is to bring a tighter focus to your search by narrowing down your set, and Dialog has a number of helpful tools and techniques for doing this. Let's start with this search set that I created in basic search mode and the search was pretty well crafted, but with this many hits, we need to scale down the scope. So let's look at the ways we can do that. If you have these checkboxes enabled, we could check one or both of these and run the search again, but really a lot of these records are peer reviewed anyway, and we could limit to full text if we like, but then you might miss a lot of excellent records that have biblio and abstracts, but not full text. So let's consider some other options. Very often the key is to add more terms to your search. And this of course will depend on what you're looking for. So at this point, you'll wanna really give some thought to what you want in particular. Looking at the results list or downloading a few sample records that you really like might help you to identify good terms to add. In this case, let's say that within the broad area of nutrition for dogs or cats, we're especially interested in thiamine, also referred to as thiaminase, ending in A-S-E. There are a couple of ways that we could add that term. We could just type and thiamine right here and run that search, or we could click here on search within, which takes us down to this search box at the bottom where we can add more terms. I'll type in thiamine dollar sign three using truncation so that we'll get either thiamine or thiaminase. And when I click search here, I get a new set that has thiamine in it in addition to our original search terms. And as you can see, our number is now a lot smaller and it is more focused on what we really want. And we can repeat this process, adding more terms as we go along until we get to that sweet spot with just the right records. Another way to add new terms is to create a separate set for them and then add that set to our original set using and. I can search here for just thiamine, but this time, instead of looking for thiamine anywhere at all in the record, let's say we really want thiamine to be an important part of our records. One technique we could consider is to search for thiamine this time just in the title field. We can do that like this. TI is the field code for title, so we just put that right in front of the open parenthesis here. Or we might also want records that have thiamine as a keyword in the subject or SU field of the record. We could do that by putting TI comma SU in front of the parentheses that contain our term, thiamine. We create that set, and if we go to the recent sets link at the top, we see that we now have thiamine search as our set three. Now we wanna combine that with our original set, S1. We could do that by typing S1 and S3 in this box here, or in the regular search box on the previous page. But here's another way that might be quicker especially when you're combining a lot of sets. Here in this list, we can check S1 and S3, and here we'll find buttons for either or or and. In this case, we want and, so we click there, and we have a new set, S4, with even fewer hits. Now we've only got records with our original terms and that have thiamine in either the title or the subject field, and we're really making good progress. Let's go to our new results list. We can get there by clicking on either the search statement or the number of hits. And over to the right of the results list, we see a column 
of narrow by filters. We also call them result filters. And these are a very powerful tool. But for now, let's just see part of what they can do. Under source type, just to pick a filter, we see the different kinds of records in this set. If they're not already showing, I can click the plus sign and the top five values appear. Then I click more options here and I get this pop-up, which lets you see all of the source type values in this set and we can work with them in several ways. Now we see most of these are from scholarly journals. By the way, you notice this number is bigger than the set. And that's because the numbers here are before the removal of duplicates, which is done in the actual set. But we also have a number of newspaper articles and some other sources that are all valid, but we might not want them. So we can get a little more narrow if we select scholarly journals and let's include conference papers. And when we click narrow my results, we get a new smaller set using that filter. And you can do similar things with each of these other filters as you like, narrowing down uh, to only certain journal titles, for example, or to records that also have other subject terms that you can select here. And this can be a very effective way to narrow down your search for greater clarity. So now let's scroll down and look at the range of publication dates in these results. As you can see, some of these records are quite old. And unless you're doing historical research, you probably want mainly the more recent records. So limiting by date is something you'll probably do routinely. And there are several ways to do it. We can use these sliders here, or we can click under here where it says, enter a specific date range and fill in a start date and an end date for our search if we want. It could be an exact date using the format that they show you here, but I'm just going to put in a start date of 2010 and click update. Now we're down to a very reasonable number of hits. And more importantly, these results are narrowed down to our own custom design to help us keep just what we want and remove the rest step by step until we're satisfied that we have both a reasonable number of records and the right kind of records. You may need to experiment with this a few times, but you'll find this process is something that Dialog does very, very well. If we go back to recent sets, we can trace what we did at each step and see how the numbers changed. And when we go back to the results list, we're now ready to either download all of these results using the download all button or select some from the list and use export save to download just those records. So that's it. You've learned how to start out in dialogue with a very large set of records and then narrow it down one step at a time until you have just the records you want using the methods that you choose to achieve what you want from each search. If you'd like more information, here are links to some additional resources. If you have any questions or can use some help, give us a call at these numbers, or you can email us at customer at dialogue.com. Thanks for using Dialog, and enjoy the rest of your day.